So uh, let's uh, start. Uh, good morning, everyone. And first, thank you all your attendance uh, in those days in which we are completely fully booked with online meetings. So we really hope this information could help you, uh, your companies, to properly prepare for this soon coming new normal. Uh, Irene, can you please go to the next one? Yeah, thank you. Uh, during the coming 25 or 30 minutes, a couple of colleagues and myself are going to try to explain through a kind of uh, realistic examples and a guided story that could be completely also real, how is going to change our routine arriving and working at our company facilities. You can check up this slide how the order of the brief presentations from Grupo Alaba will be. I'm the first one, Hector Cordal, uh, working with infrared technologies for more than 10 years. And I will take care of the first part, thermographic systems for body temperature measurement, followed by my colleague, Irene Torija, um, specialist among others in air filtering technology. I'm finishing our presentation, Marta Bravo, focusing uh, her speech in Raman spectroscopy. If I'm not wrong, uh, it will be a short time available after each part in order to answer your questions. So please don't hesitate in asking whatever you have in mind. And for deeper or more dedicated questions, we will be pleased to contact you after the presentation. I have already introduced myself, so very quick. This is me, and you have here my contact details. Irene, the next one. So let's go to the point. This is our illustrious uh, main character, Alex. Alex is a researcher working in a pharmaceutical company, which is nowadays completely focused trying to find the coronavirus vaccine. Let's see how his back to work could be after two months working from home. Irene? This is Alex's company entrance lobby. Despite of the fact that the majority of the employees were completely healthy after two months locked up, I mean by healthy, at least not mentally talking, but uh, physically healthy, his company decided to install a thermographic camera in order to measure all the people coming temperature. Of course, it's completely right that uh, non all COVID-19 infected people will show up a significant body temperature increase. But at least this is the only completely safe, as it is non-contact, and accurate method to detect, to detect fever. You can use both a handheld camera with an operator or maybe an autonomous fixed system. And in this, this slide contains what a fully automated system for elevated body temperature could need, which is a fixed camera, a fixed point to measure the employees or visitors, steady and one by one, and a well-trained operator reviewing the detected positives. Most of these systems will include also a black body, but actually we will see in a few minutes that probably this is not a good idea in most of the cases. Probably all of you have already received tens of different thermal systems proposals for this application. For sure, all of them are accurate, wonderful, and saying that saying what all company managers want to hear, that they can measure accurately multiple people moving, and it doesn't matter how they reach the place or their outfit. So everything is okay for these outstanding systems, and look at that, they are all very cheap. Great, isn't it? Um, let's dig it a little bit in how those systems really work and let's see if all what most of those systems tell is true or not. Irene, can you move to the next one? Yeah, that's it. Um, let, let's go to the, to the technical details of those systems, okay? And let's see that the first, uh, maybe not so true uh, specification which is that those systems could uh, measure to lots of people moving at the, same, at the same time. This could not be really done due to a couple of very important statements 
in thermography principles, which are the minimum, the minimum number of pixels to measure accurately and the IFOB. We are going to be required to have at least three pixels in the correct spot to measure accurately the body temperature. And this correct spot is the tear duct. The inner ear or mouth interior could also be used, but, but they are less practical in this pandemic scenario. This means that we are going to need at least three, pix three pixels in around half a centimeter, meaning that our pixel equivalent size in the reality, or better said, IFOB, should not be bigger than two millimeters, period. Nothing else to discuss about this. This is what physics says. It doesn't matter what fancy brochure can state. It is not physically possible to measure accurately to more than one or maybe two people at the same time. Here you can see an example of a real and high-end thermographic system. I mean, more than 20,000 euros. Not the marketing, just its detector and lens specification and getting the recommended measurement distance from its own user manual. Check out its IFOF. It's almost four millimeter, which is practically the double the maximum size. It is completely impossible to measure with that. Maybe a 10 or 15% error in the IFOP could provide significant, but not dangerous errors. But more than a 25% deviation in the IFOP is a big error. A double IFO of error is no sense at all. Can you click it, Irene? Yeah. Um, the, the next point is the, to measure accurately the moving people. And again, this is not true. As those, dete as those detectors and their pixels work as a kind of radiation wells, they need some time to be filled with all the required infrared energy. Doing some math, it results that our maximum speed to be accurately uh, will be 0.06 kilometers per hour. And just for you to make an idea of what we are talking about, let's see this speed championship podium. Wikipedia says that the common total speed is 1.6 kilometers per hour, and a garden snail is 0.05 kilometers per hour. So there you go. If be faster than a snail, is having some normal moving for human beings, then it's true. Thermographic systems could be used to measure moving people. But remember not to be much more faster than the snail. Irene, can you click? Yeah. And after, and after all, here comes the jewel of the crown, the black body. I mean jewel because normally those calibration accessories are being offered for almost the same cost of the camera, when actually, at the 99% of the cases, they will only introduce another error source in our equation. This is a fixed temperature source, but please, your skin is not always at the same temperature. During the summer, most of the systems using a black body will detect, will detect a 95% of feverish people. But the real danger will come during winter, in which maybe those fantastic black body systems will not detect, detect real people with elevated temperature. So summarizing, it's not physically possible to measure multiple moving people having or not a great and expensive black body in the majority of the cases. Yeah, the next one, yeah. Uh, this, after all, the, the technique needs some uh, minimal requirements and greater deviation from ideal measurement conditions means greater uncertainty in measurement accuracy. And the worst point is that we are going to do, as we are going to lose radiation from our sources, people, greater uncertainty means lower temperature measurements. So feverish people could not be detected. But we know that not always is possible to fulfill these ideal conditions. So we will need to arrive to a compromise solution, but only a real thermography professionals are prepared to prepare a good solution to each customer. Many millions of euros has already 
being spent in Spain on systems that directly has fraudulent advertising and specification. Let's prevent this from happening. We have been working with thermography for more than 35 years. Ask us. We can help you to find the best solution. Irene, can you move to the next one? So, what's the use? What use has an infrared camera for topics related with uh, to COVID-19? Uh, clearly, to detect an elevated body temperature of an average distribution of already known data from the individual himself or from a statistical population taken individually, stand still from the front and with the eyes uncovered. Glasses are completely prohibited. Can you click the next one, please? Did you receive some fever detection system proposals with marketing pictures like this? This is a clear indication about that systems will never work properly. So uh, if you click, Irene, the next one is uh, just uh, the part for questions. I don't know if someone has a quick question to, to answer right now, or I will uh, let my colleague Irene to continue. Yes, I think that we will uh, leave the questions for the end of uh, all your presentations. So okay. please, Irene, uh, continue. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank uh, you very much, Hector. Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, perfectly. Okay, so this is me. My name is Irene Torija, and I'm a product manager at Alaba Ingenieros. So, continuing with Hector's presentation, our character Alex enters the office that says with all his colleagues. And so, the first control at the entrance can detect people with possible symptoms, as Hector uh, told us. The uh, risk still exists, as others could be asymptomatic or simply without fever. Experts tend to agree that coronavirus are transmittable through the inhalation of droplets from a person who has the infection. At the beginning, they thought these were heavy enough and couldn't travel more than one meter. However, several researchers have found that they can travel more than seven or eight meters. For example, according to the Institute of Environmental Assessment and Water Research, SARS-CoV-2 can remain active in urban suspension for more than three hours. It travels up as a part of particles of different sizes, uh, which are emitted by breathing, talking, or sneezing. Uh, because of this, the uh, risk, risk of infection is 19 times more likely indoors than outdoors. So the question now is, how can it be removed from the air? The first option could be do the same as we do with the uh, surface cleaning, using chemical products. In this case, could be ozone or hydrogen peroxide. However, uh, this substance cannot be applied in the presence of people, and applica applicators must have protective equipment and proper training. The European Chemical Agency has classified ozone as a dangerous substance because it can cause respiratory, pro respiratory problems, skin irritation, and aid damage. All these issues only allow to perform the disinfection once a day, and the disinfected area must be ventilated before its use. Other option uh, could be UV light. Artificial UV light, just like overexposure to the sun, is now to cause to cause side effects for humans, like skin burns. So UV light should not be run when anyone is nearby. Once again, this option does not allow continuous disinfection of the air. Uh, the last option could be high efficiency filtration. But in order to uh, do that, we have to know how the virus, how big the virus is. As you can see in this picture, the 
the virus is about 100 nanometers, 1,000 times smaller than a human hair. Standard ventilation filters are not able to retain these particle sizes, so it is necessary to use high efficiency filters or absolute filters. Uh, these kind of filters are used in airplanes or pharmaceutical industries, and they are regulated by the international standards and classified according to the efficiency. Uh, this efficiency is calculated with the most penetrating particle size and it is usually between, between uh, 0.15 and 0.2 micrometers, more or less the size of the virus. So the solution uh, will be integrate absolute filters into simple and user-friendly devices. The contaminated air in the room is normally treated with two more filters a pre-filter to remove large particles, an active cardboard filter to remove uh, volatile organic compounds, and then an absolute HEPA filter to remove nanoparticles, including the virus. This type of equipment should have a very high flow rate in order to treat large rooms in less time. Uh, the main advantage of these uh, high efficiency filtration systems are continuous operation, as it doesn't produce, produce any harm to the people in the room, and there is no need of quality staff to handle it. Uh, placing these devices in all the rooms where people are will reduce the risk of infection, keeping people safe. Uh, thank you once again. I, if we, uh, we, I left my, the, the I left my colleague Marta to continue the presentation. Thank okay. you very much. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, very well. Great. Good morning, all. Uh, as you can see, my name is Marta. Uh, I work in Alaba Engineers as an internal sales engineer in the photonics, imaging, and nanotechnology area. Thank you, Sepo, for having us. Okay, taking up the story of my colleague, once Alex arrives at his workplace, what he can do? As you may already know from TV and so on, polymerase chain reaction PCR tests and the enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay ELISA are the gold standard for virus detection. Nevertheless, none of them are ideal in terms of cost-effectiveness, speed, and accuracy when testing in high-volume pandemic situations, as sometimes cause false positive or false negative results. In that sense, uh, Raman spectroscopy has many advantages uh, for biomedical applications. In general, as you may already know, spectroscopy studies interaction between light and matter. Uh, information provided by Raman spectroscopy results from a light scattering process. As you can see in this picture, the vast majority of the photons are dispersed or scattered in this, at the same energy as the incident photons, which are here. Uh, this is called Rayleigh scattering, but a small fraction of the light is is optically scattered at different frequencies from the incident photons, as you can see here. This is called Raman scattering, and since uh, that difference in frequencies is due to the natural frequencies of the molecules, Raman spectroscopy yields information about intra and intermolecular vibrations. Apart from that, uh, sorry, it has main it has a lot of advantages because uh, it is a promising tool for rapid, accurate, and cost-effective diagnosis. Moreover, it enables non-invasive and non-destructive uh, analysis of the sample. However, um, as you can see, Raman signals are uh, typically weak. For that reason, surface-enhanced Raman scattering, also called SERS, 
is a technique which offers orders of magnitude increases in Raman intensity, overcoming the traditional drawback of Raman scattering. Enhancement takes place at a metal surface, which you can see here, which has a nanoscale roughness. You can see here also. When a metal structure formed by nanoimpression is exposed to a monochromatic light source, which is the uh, Raman laser, it, an interaction between the light and the electrons on the surface of the metal uh, takes place, generating a very powerful electrical uh, current, which is the, the SER signal, you can see here. Metals like gold, silver, and copper are the most common materials used for SERs. But there are also other options like graphene, semiconductors, and quantum dots that are also being explored. A graphene oxide, a chemically treated version of graphene, has a number of properties uh, which are suitable to biological applications also. First example I would like you to show is the one carried out by a group of researchers at Jackson State University in which they combine graphene oxide and a more traditional gold nanoparticle into a hybrid search probe. Um, and you can see uh, they observe both the chemical and electromagnetic enhancement effects to maximize sensitivity when detecting two especially pathogens, which are the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV, and the methylene-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, MRSA. The system used to make that measurement was composed, was show here, is show here, sorry. You can see the QE Pro uh, Raman spectroscope, spectrometer from Ocean Inside, the Raman source, and the Raman probe. HIV uh, was chosen as the first pathogen of interest due to its prevalence as a cause of death in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. Here in the Raman spectra, you can see uh, each peak of the of the Raman a spectra could be assigned to the literature reported data, confirming that Raman spectra were attributable to the presence of the, of the HIV in the sample. Same happens with the Raman spectra of MRSA here. And also you can see that um, both cases, HIV and MRSA, there is a higher share signal uh, displayed by the hybrid probe. Here is shown uh, by the purple one, and here is by the, purple, by the black one, rather than the, for example, gold nanoparticle or graphene oxide probe alone. In both cases, happen happen the same. Second study uh, was carried out to detect surgical site infections by using a fiber optic oceanside spectrometer. This setup is, is shown here also. Um, here, yes, uh, here in the Raman spectra, you can see series of three and four Raman peaks, which are clearly observed in the in the frequency range indicated by the black arrows, which are uh, also in quality agreement with literature. Moreover, here the the characteristic shape of the E. coli spectra can be resolved even at acquisition times as low as one second which indicates the high sensitivity of, of the system also. Sorry. Um, third study was developed to detect DNA point mutations from cancer cells. Detection target was cross gene, which uh, has been commonly found to contain mutations in cancer cells. Here in this picture, you can see the microfluidic chip used for cell analysis of cellular DNA mutation. The orange chains represent the wheel type cross sequences and on which the black uh, dot represents the mutated base. Here uh, you can see the Raman spectra of the, of the analysis. And you can see also that search intensity is negatively correlated with the proportion of wild type cross gene, in that sense, and positively correlated uh, to the proportion of mutant cross gene, which is the blue one. Finally, I would like to highlight our partner Ocean Insight QE Programme and Product Family, 
Specifically, it's QE program and plus a spectrometer which features many advantages over the QE program and family. It detects weaker Raman signatures. You can see more with a widened spectral range, which covers from 1 and 150 to 3,000 more or less. Ultra low, ultra low noise electronics and detector could impose low limits uh, of detection even lower. And faster measurements are also allowed due to its sensitivity improvement. Here in this, in this figure, you can see the Raman spectra comparing the QE program and plus, which is in green color, with the QE program and series, which is in blue color. And the sensitivity improvement with the Q program and plus is evident in this, in this figure, as you can see. And that's all. Thank you. you thank you all for listening and hope you, you have enjoyed. Thank you very much, uh, Hector, Irene, and Marta, for, for this really, really interesting uh, presentation and a really good piece of uh, teamwork uh, here. And now we, we have. Uh, we have a time for questions. Uh, first one uh, related to the, the first presentation of, of Hector. Uh, what was the resolution of the sensor when you explained the uh, IFOV? What about increasing the sensor resolution to measure more persons? Mm, hi. So, uh, thank you for the question. Um, actually, normally with a kind of uh, regular detector, which for this uh, application could be uh, 320 by uh, 240, we will only be able to measure accurately one person. If we want to uh, increase the, um, the resolution of the detector, we can probably double it or at least uh, be close to one megapixel resolution in the infrared, in the long wave infrared. But, uh, you will increase a lot the cost of the solution probably with one megapixel uh, resolution detector you will be able to measure uh, up to three people uh, allowing them the the minimum the safe distance uh, between those uh, people to be measured and you know at least from my point of view i prefer to spend uh, mm, a little more time with each people, which it will only take one second to measure one people, uh, and measure one by one, then increase the resolution of the detector and the cost of the system to be able to measure two or three persons at the same time. The problem is that um, all the systems that are being sold for this application in the market nowadays are as much 400 by 300 pixels. And they claim that uh, they could measure up to 25 or 30 people at the same time, which is completely wrong. And that's it. Okay. I, think that, uh, <laughs> I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question. Uh, next question, observation and question, in fact. Some companies are selling air purificators based on UV or other. What do you think about this kind of devices, particularly about ozone air purificators? Could them be useful? In my opinion, there is no evidence. What do you think about? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, as I said, ozone could be uh, useful for this kind of application, but uh, the important part of it is that uh, also it's very dangerous for mm, people in for, for people and for animals of, of for all kinds of life that could be in in the in the in the room. So we have to be very careful with uh, with the use of these technologies. Uh, the uh, sanity department, uh, the Spanish uh, sanity uh, department. Uh, already sent a note saying that uh, ozone is not the solution, that we have to uh, be very careful with this use and, uh, because it's really toxic and, and we, ha we can have a, a, a healthy uh, problem, I don't know, bigger, not bigger than the coronavirus, of course, but, but a 
really bad one. Uh, so, okay, thank you, uh, thank you very much. Uh, more questions. Uh, thank you for all your presentations. Is there uh, another technique apart from Raman that has been proved to be successful? Um, yes. Uh, I uh, think that near-infrared spectroscopy also represents a useful tool in, in clinical and bio biological fields. There are many, I have seen many studies uh, that have been published on how near spectroscopy is a promising tool. For example, with a uh, flu vaccine also, it uh, makes, it, makes uh, it, uh, manufacturing faster and more efficient. And also, it has been also proved that near measurement can be used for lar large scale detection of HIV also, virus. Mm -hmm. So, I, the, the information I, I have. Okay, th th thank you very much. Two more questions. Uh, let's try to answer them both. Uh, hello, thanks for a nice presentation. If I understood right, uh, you are saying that we can detect COVID uh, by means of Raman spectroscopy. If so, what do you need? Blood, urine, saliva? Thank you. Mm, I will say that, uh, well, I'm not, I'm not an expert on, on that field, uh, but uh, what I have seen is, uh, yes, a human, um, yes, like blood, uh, yes, <laughs> saliva, and, but I, I'm not a, an expert on that, so I, I, I don't know uh, concretely on that. It, it depends. I, I think it depends on on which type of of uh, application or uh, on which you are interested in. Uh, mm -hmm. if, okay. If, if 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 you want, I can I can look at it uh, deeply so uh, I can give you a more accurate answer. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. We also all uh, see your emails. So if. Uh, Every, anybody would like to stay in touch with you later on, so just uh, uh, please just write. Last question, again for uh, Hector. Uh, do you think to use alkaline uh, water spreading directly to the people? There is uh, scientific evidence that this wa uh, water affects the conformation of the glycoproteins in the coronavirus and inactive, inactivate it. Uh, well, uh, actually, I have to say that that I have no idea. <laughs> uh, you have to take in mind that uh, we are expert on the on the technology itself, but uh, normally not on the not on the multiple applications of the of the technology. So uh, I cannot link this uh, water spreading with alkaline solutions with the uh, the, the the thermal detection of elevated body temperature. Which is my my area of expertise. Uh, sorry, I, I cannot answer. I'm not uh, a biologist uh, or expert in the virus. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. I I see that we continue with new questions, but uh, I will propose you to switch the debate to the chat, and uh, and now to to focus on the new pre presentation. 